Okay, guys, I am super excited to welcome our next guest to Let's Get Freaky podcast. We've got Marie with us today. How are you? Hello, I'm fine, thanks. Doing really well. Doing great. It's been a great day today, so I'm in a good mood. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. Yeah, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very excited to talk to you. I know you've great. had amazing experiences, <laughs> so I'm excited to, to hear them. What part of the UK yeah, are you? Have you? Well, I've been in London, say, God, 40 years, 30, okay. 35 maybe. And um, I'm in Birmingham now at the moment. I'm at my mom's house because we're selling the house she died a couple of years ago. And we oh, just said, uh, get the house ready to sell. So I'm just here at the moment. I've left London. I sold my flat in London. And okay. I'm planning to move abroad when this is done here. So oh, okay. uh, probably, oh, probably okay. Spain. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> nice. Better weather as well. <laughs> Better weather. I'm sick of <laughs> weather, aren't we all? Aren't we all? I'm a sun person, definitely. <laughs> yeah, same. Same. <laughs> yeah. We don't get enough. We don't. We don't. Even though I do burn in the sun quite a lot, which is not good. Yeah, but I like the I shade. Care. I like it when it's sunny. I can sit in the shade. <laughs> yeah, just sweating to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Are you from London or is it? Uh... No, I'm Irish originally from Dublin and uh, came over here when I was a teenager and been here ever since. And I qualified as an accountant and I moved to London when I was very young, probably about, no, nah, not very young, probably about 20, I think it was when I moved to London wow. and uh, got married really quick <laughs> within a couple of weeks. Really? So, yeah, that was a bit strange. About? <laughs> it lasted about 20 years. So, you oh, know, did, cool. did, did, did people were saying, what lads, what lads, how can you do that? How can you do that? But yeah. it lasted 20 years. So, so I'm divorced yeah. now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. No, oh, it's okay. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so with the, with the paranormal, where did it all start for you? Where did it all start? Um, it started years ago when I was a very small child. Um, my mum said I was about three or four. And I'd wake up occasionally, not all the time, screaming, saying there was people in the room coming to get me, coming out of the wall. And I'd be pointing at the wall and screaming and saying, people, people. And my mum called the doctor a couple of times to see if I had a high temperature or anything like that. And never anything wrong with me. They'd look at me funny and say, no, she's fine. Must have been a bad dream something so it started off at that early that young and then wow. when I was six I had something odd removed from my leg my mum was washing me one day and found a little lump on my shin my left shin and took me to the hospital and they said it was just a piece of debris a piece of metal or something how on earth I'd get a piece of metal in my leg I've no idea there's yeah. no scratch or any cut that how it went in or anything like that so I have the two little scars where they actually removed it and it moves my mom said it moved when they tried to get it out so I've got two scars like that side by side where it moved around and they took it out on the other the scar wow. so that was uh just a bit strange but not to anybody else really it was just one of those things where I had like in her legs a piece of rubbish or debris they never gave it to my mom and yeah. just told it was a piece of debris um piece of oh, little man. piece of metal that must have got in there somehow and it was put down to that but when I go back and add all these things in it's there you know I've got the scars to prove it yeah and then um probably I had some sort of sleep paralysis episodes i'd call them um where you're just paralyzed which is absolutely horrible that was a very scary time when i was a child you know it happened i'd say it's only happened probably about 10 or 12 times in my whole life but most of them was when i was young and i've had a couple when i was older but most when i was young but yeah. it's like when you when you're having it it remind you're reminded of times before it's like, oh no my god this feeling so it's like you've had more than you think you've had than you remember, basically. But yeah. it's you've probably heard this before. You're just completely paralyzed. You open your eyes and think, oh, my God, oh, my God, I can't move. And you're just filled with this 
absolute fear that you've never felt in your life before. It's an yeah. unreal fear. It's not like fear. You, a gun could be held to your head and you wouldn't feel that fear. It's different, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It's just yeah. hard to explain. It's just I can, unreal. I can totally it runs relate. your blood cold, you know? Yeah. yeah, I've I've had sleep paralysis throughout my life as well. So oh, 100% no. know how that feels. Yeah, it's horrible. It's terrifying. It? It's yeah, terrifying. It's awful. You so can... I've had a few of those. Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. Because yeah. you, you are you're completely, you, you can't move, as you're saying. It is, it's oh, a terrifying yeah. feeling. And it's like you, you're you trying to use all your energy to scream, and it's yes. exhausting trying to. Sorry, guys, we, we lost connection there. I don't know what happened. Sometimes, uh, for whatever reason, they don't want us talking about this stuff. Whoever they are, <laughs> that's what it seems, and they play games. A bit of like... jinx. <laughs> <laughs> so we was talking about sleep paralysis. Um, yeah, you were saying you had several episodes as well, and I, was, I wanted to ask you: um, Did you ever hear any noises during? You know it? what? I used to get this. The, I I could feel it coming before it happened. So yeah, I could yeah, feel, so I could like feel a horrible a wave. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly it—a wave. And it's a going horrible, sicky feeling in your stomach and everything, yeah. and all and you that. you can't, you know, horrible. that you can't stop it. It's like a vibe. It's going to come straight away yeah. after you get those feelings. Yeah, it's, that's it. Yeah, it's like you can't move. It's terrifying. That's it. And it, but it was like um, it, it's going to sound strange, but at first it's quite a nice feeling for me. Like it's yeah. a vibration, vibration that feels quite nice, but I know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, and and, and what that makes scared. Nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then once, the once I was in that state, uh, there was an entity in a room in in my mind, but I could yeah. feel. I couldn't. I couldn't look around the room to see it. Yeah, exactly. And I knew it was there, and it's and happens. I was fighting it in my yeah. mind. This is what happens. I, I, you know, there's something there at the end, just in the corner, at the end of the bed, or somewhere there. And yeah. I sleep on my back, so my eyes are up there. I'm trying to see it, and then I'm thinking, I don't really want to see it because it feels really evil. I used to get this really evil feel in the whole room and everything. Yeah. Like it's really like I thought used to think it was a devil. It was that evil feeling, you know, like that. Yeah. For yeah. years, I thought it was that. It was really scary. So I was terrified for years of that, going that, to bed. That was exactly and the same. Yeah, exactly the same with me. And it's I weird, thought it was, it was a, I got the feeling it was a, a witch. Yeah, I'll go with the witch. Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> looking into it recently, there's yeah. the, the hag and a lot of people experience. It, that's, my mom told me, when I, I did um, some interviews and things and she was listening to them about the UFOs and the experiences. And she said, you never mentioned aliens years ago when you were three or four she's but you did mention the old witch sitting on you trying to strangle you with the hair and when she said that i remembered it. I thought, oh my god uh, it was terrifying it's horrible ho ugly old hag rotten teeth and everything the ugliest thing wow. you could see used yeah. to be on me and strangling me with really long gray hair and like pulling me up in the bed and oh, i was wow. screaming and mom was like oh it's a bad dream it's a bad dream but to me it was very real you know it was very real yeah so that terrified me they, they were the horror things that i went through years ago and so i was terrified of nighttime basically yeah. i would do anything stick matchsticks in my eyes and stay up late and get people playing cards and games and all sorts i wouldn't let anybody go to bed <laughs> yeah so that. that went on for well into till i was about 30 <laughs> you know but um then i did have uh two experiences that opened my eyes and i knew they were ufos i've seen the ufo at the missing time it was there before it was there after my husband my daughter were with me we all experienced it and i remember being on the ship and that so i sort of gathered later on i knew what it was and i thought this is not two separate things happening to me i haven't got all these entities and ghosts and things and then plus entities and aliens as well it just didn't seem logical to me one of you know it has to be something can't be everything so I was trying to sort of make sense of it. People were saying to me, maybe you're a medium and spirits can contact you or something like that, something that's attracting you. I don't know. I'm just thinking it's all linked now. I really do think it's all links. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's where I am at the moment. I feel like it's yeah, all connected. Yeah. It's so, weird. But what, sorry. When, when you got abducted and you had yeah. the meeting time, 
Can you tell us what happened there? Okay, what happened? Um, the first time, I don't think, uh, I don't remember being abducted or anything like that. But what happened was, I was only about 18. I was with my first boyfriend. His parents were away and I wanted to stay over at his house. And it was about three o'clock in the morning because the clock was there. So I remember seeing that when I woke up. So it was always about three o'clock, four o'clock, something like that. But it was, um, I woke up to all this noise in the or of the wardrobe was slamming really fast, like really fast. And we had some chrome, he had some chrome bars in the hallway. They were literally jumping off the ground. The other doors were slamming. There's just like loads of things going on. And I woke up and in panic and, oh my God, what is it? And it lasted about five seconds and then it stopped. So I barely heard it. It was like, oh my God, I, I heard it all right. I heard everything. And then it stopped. And my boyfriend was on the floor in the corner of the room and he had his crucifix on. He was like this, like shaking. And he was like, I was saying, what happened? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? And I just said, I'm going home. I'm going home. And I said, you're coming with me. You can't stay here. So I just thought it was a poltergeist or ghost or something because when I used to get the paranormal stuff, you never, I never saw lights. I never saw anything spacey. So I never put it down to aliens. You put it down to other things, you know. I just didn't see any bright lights at that time. And yeah. our UFOs or anything. So, or aliens face to face. So I just didn't know. I just thought it was some, something creepy following me or following the family or something. Because it seemed to be all the time, like the lights would go on and off by themselves, TV remotes all going off by themselves, and change the TV, and the same would happen. Um, just loads of things like that. Things getting lost, and you're looking everywhere, and it's just there in front of you, and all that kind of thing. And um, I got the lights going off and on on video several times and the doors opening by themselves. That was freaky. But it would go on for maybe about a week and then would stop. Then it wouldn't happen again. So everything is like a one off. I don't, it doesn't happen all the time. It's like the lights going on and off. That was really the way it was happening in the kitchen on and off. And I was saying, turn it on. And it would come on. And I was like, creepy. Wow. Then it, you know, I flicked the switch a few times and showed that the bulb was blown or something but then it just came on by itself again so things like that I can catch on video yeah because it's happened it would happen over a few days so then I think well this is happening I'll catch it on video next time it happens so I normally have my camera ready now that's why I'm able to catch things yeah. and the same with the UFOs or orbs I'll see one or two beforehand and I think oh that must be here I'll keep my camera handy and I'm bound to catch something and I always do so I always get a little warning first same with okay. UFOs, like people probably wonder how she just points the camera and there's a UFO there. It's it's not. I Sometimes I get a warning they're going to be there or I know I get a feeling, a warning, feeling that they're going to be there. And I'll go out with my camera and take a few pictures and there'll be UFOs in the pictures. And um, sometimes I can foretell a date like uh, in a month in advance and I'll say on video like they're going to be here on 16th of June and then I'll upload a video on the 16th of June. I just wow. this, uh, this, this happened a few times. I don't do it all the time, but it's happened quite a few times. And I've tried mm -hmm. to do it on video to show people like there's some sort of connection here. I don't know how I know. I don't know how I know. I just seem to know and then they'll come. <laughs> it's, wow, it's that's so interesting. <laughs> But I've seen your videos. I think that's how I first connected with you because I saw the yeah. video. I was like, "Wow!" And, and you put you've got a lot of videos. You put them out a lot. They're, they're very interesting. A lot now. Probably the first video I did UFOs over the years here and there, but they never let you catch them. I could never get a photo of anything. It was so. It was like they were hiding everything. So secretive. Absolutely so secretive. So I would wake up maybe at the beginning of something, at the end of something. So it was just weird. It was like, oh, did that really happen? Or did I just imagine that? So yeah. it was always like that. You get a second or a half a second and you think you're going crazy. And you try to tell people and they look at you and think, yeah, right, you know. So it's just, they were just so secretive. But I find now, since about... 2017 they're here all the time they let me get loads of videos and they're letting other people get videos and they seem to be showing themselves a bit more but I did get a few in 1990 I have some from outside my flat in London and 2012 I got a really good one the orange lovely orange orbs loads of them and that was a really good video so I have got some I lost quite a bit on my old YouTube channel that I didn't have copies for so I've lost all my old oh, sightings I just have a 
one or two from those I just mentioned. The rest are all from two, se two seven, 2017 up to now and they're current. And they're following me around the world. If I go on holiday, I'll get them as well. They'll be outside wow. following the plane or something. Uh, I've caught them following my plane before. Really? And then, then waiting at the villa when I get there. So I just found them by accident. I was looking through some videos of when I was on holiday in Sri Lanka. I went there for about a year. A long holiday um and I, there was just so many sightings so that's why I'm, i've been putting up the last few days i just yeah. found a folder full of new ones that i completely forgot about i forgot so many sightings there but um i forgot the point oh yeah i was going there i had to stop in dubai and i, I caught took a film from the plane the first plane and there was two or three UFOs following that little spheres, little silver spheres. And then I stopped in Dubai for four hours. And then uh, I caught another UFO following my other plane. So, and then they were waiting at the villa. I came out and took a video of the moon that night. And there's a UFO right under the moon, another sphere. Wow. And um, I took another photo after that. You could see it's moved. So it's not Venus or anything like that. You can see in the photo, it's definitely moved. I took the video, the photo straight after the video. Yeah. By accident, funnily enough, but it's proof that the thing moves. Yeah. Me. And um, so that means they followed my plane. They knew what times and everything. Knew I was in Dubai for four hours. Was able to follow the next plane. And then waiting at the villa when I get there. When I just discovered this, probably a year or two later, I didn't even see the UFO at the time or the UFOs out the window. But it looks like I'm actually filming them. Like I can see them, but I honestly oh, didn't okay. see them. And I'm even following it like this. So, so you're just filming weird. outside the plane. I'm just you, filmed in, yeah, you, trying, maybe I'll catch something and maybe I won't. I like filming the clouds above and yeah. the land beneath anyway. But, um, and then I just was watching it one day and I just noticed this little silver sphere. And when I watched the other videos, there was about four objects all together. There was two on the right and two on the left. And they do follow the plane a good bit and come into the middle and get a little close up. And it's, you can see like there's a structure in the middle, like a band going around the sphere. And um, it's quite a good little photo. It's Even though it's small, when you zoom in on it, it's quite good detail. So, but I couldn't get my head around that. I mean, how do they know all this stuff, you know? Yeah. How do they know? <laughs> you, you, you mentioned missing time. Yeah, the missing time, yeah. It was when um, my friend, um, when he, when that happened, and yeah. um, I ran home um, to my mom, and told my mom this happened, that well, everything was shaking, it was so scary, there was a ghost or something. And she was accusing me of dabbling. You kids, what are you up to? Stop dabbling. She called researching dabbling because yeah. I, so I'd had a lot of experience in ghosty things. And people said, they don't exist. Do you imagine you go to bed and there's nothing under the bed? There's nothing here. And I knew they were lying. Well, didn't know what they were talking about, basically, because I knew yeah. I wasn't going yeah. mad. Yeah. I know what I see. I know what I saw. And, you know, it's, I've never faltered on that. So, um, I just knew they were lying, but um, this day, well, mum was just saying, what did you do? And I said, nothing. So anyway, the next day I went around, I brought my sister, I said, better go around and see how he is and what's happened. And he smashed all the mirrors in the house. The house was a little bit wrecked. I was thinking, oh my God, the mum's going to kill us, you know, kill you. <laughs> but um, he said he was shaking. He was, he's, he was completely a different person. He was laughing hysterically all the time. He wouldn't stop laughing and rocking back and forth like this and completely gone off the scale. And Sorry, was he this your ex, your ex Yeah, he, just overnight like that, since oh, that wow. experience. He said there was aliens in the room and they were doing something to me in the bed, taking things out of my body or on my stomach or something. And I was saying, don't be so stupid. And I was thinking he's lost the plot. And plus all the laughing and everything. I, we just thought he'd lost the plot and had a nervous breakdown or something. But they had to call a doctor for him and he was hospitalised. And he, he's never come out, you know, never come out. But he's always saying aliens were there, they've taken her. And when he comes, when he gets out for a weekend or he used to, he'd come around to my mum's house. This is where I am now. It was only down the road where he lived. 
and um, he'd come around to my mom looking for me. Have the aliens brought her back here? Have they got her? Where is she? And I just went to London then and thought, I'm going. I wow. can't stay here. So I got so scared of him because he, they said he was a schizophrenic then after that. And they said it was caused on by some, it was brought on by some sort of traumatic incident. And that was the only thing that happened. But he insisted with aliens and he was, he was sort of saying there was something like off the alien movie grotesque looking things that scared the living daylights out of him and I just didn't believe him at the time I just didn't want to hear I was, when he said you were taking things out of your stomach I said oh go on because I didn't know about missing time or how they can make you forget things I learned all that much later I was only age I didn't know all this yeah. So I didn't know there was a hybrid program, people saying that they were taking babies and things like that. I'm not saying I agree with that. I don't really go into that theory whatsoever. I've never felt that I was part of anything like that or I'm a hybrid program. I don't believe that's what's happening. You know, David okay. Jacobs, he goes on. Um, so I've never really thought much about that. But when he, he was saying that, I don't know, maybe they... Oh, I was ill and they were repairing me or something. I don't know. But he was insisting you were taking things out. You were doing something to your stomach and all sorts of things. And it just freaked him out. And then I must have just woken up at the end of it or something and heard all this noise and everything else. Wow. And uh, so nothing really happened after that for uh, years. I was married and had my daughter and everything. And the next thing I know... Um, I was became an accountant, got you know jobs and management things like that. Getting on with my life, had a few experiences of sleep paralysis, as I said, and a few weird things with the TV going on, and loads of stuff like that. That never stopped. But I put it down to friendly ghosts or something. But um, the missing time. Then the next one was um, my daughter woke up, but she never used to wake up in the night. She never was one for. A, ghosts under the bed or she never was afraid of anything like that and would go sleep in the dark if there's a crack of light she'd be like turn off the lights I can't sleep a little dot used to go on there so she loved pitch blackness she wasn't afraid of the dark or anything but this day she woke up and she was screaming she was about six at the time and she was screaming the building is falling down the building is falling down everything is shaking it's all falling down and I said oh you must have had a bad dream there's nothing I didn't feel anything shaking we were watching a movie and I know it was about 10 to 1 and we're watching the sort of the end of the movie before we went to bed because we're both working so we must have it was, wasn't long before we went to bed but um she kept saying she was shut up she was shaking in the bed and everything in her room was shaking she's everything in the room was shaking and all this and uh, so i just assumed because we, we didn't feel anything and i just assumed it was a dream i kept saying to her oh, you've had a bad dream i says um she said can i sleep in your bed and she never asked that before since she was a baby you know and she always loved her own space and her own room and i said yeah sure so we were in bed i just said to my husband i'm just gonna take her into our bed for a while she's not feeling very well she's a bit nervous so we're just lying on the bed and having a little laugh and giggle and things like that next of all this light like a laser came through the gap in the curtain you know the split in the curtain and got me right in the eye I mean what a shot right in the eye it didn't hurt but it got my attention like, what the hell was that because I was on the fourth floor there's no lights up there nothing up there that high and um, just the other apartments but I can see I had a great view of the sky in front you know like that and um, I just jumped up. I knew there was something out there. And I just saw this big, I mean, I call them orbs now. But in that time when I saw it, I didn't know orbs where they weren't around. It was just a big glowy ball, a big, much bigger than the big moon and down much lower, like just over the rooftops by about this much. And it was a huge glowy ball just opposite my window, like out there on the other side of the road. And um, I ran into my husband, like, oh my God. I mean, what else could it have been? It wasn't a plane. It wasn't just a little light. It was huge, huge, absolutely big as anything. And I don't, I, I lived in Kensington in central London. Kensington High Street is just up there, a five minute walk for me. And it's just so busy around there, traffic and everything. So this was in plain sight, but it was 
when I am, so I don't know to be quiet down by that time. But I ran into my husband, and I'm like, look at this, my God, look at this, quick, quick, quick. And he looked out the window in the sitting room, because all the way the flat was, all the windows were one, all one level, so all the windows overlooked the garden and that way. So I ran back in the room, and me and my daughter were both watching it, and suddenly, it what felt like two minutes, it really did feel like two minutes, it was getting bright and it was, I realized it was 6 a.m. I'd found out it was 6 a.m. And wow. that thing, it was still there, but it had turned uh, like a golden mist. It just, it was lovely golden color. And then it just went misty and like smoke and just all disintegrated, like, like, a, like mist. So wow. I can say like mist and smoke. And I just walked away, got on with my business, didn't mention anything, none of us mentioned anything. And I completely forgot about it for a few weeks. I don't know how long it was, between four and six weeks, something like that. And then I was at work in my office and I heard two girls in the kitchen talking and one of them mentioned UFO on TV or something. When she mentioned UFO, it came back to me. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, how on earth could I forget that? How could I forget that sighting? It was huge. And I couldn't wait to get home to ask my husband and then what happened. And then that's when we realized the missing time. It was like, how was it six o'clock? I wasn't standing at the window for five hours, but I was still in the exact same place and still standing there. I don't know if my daughter went to bed, if she went to sleep. I don't know if my husband came to bed. I just don't remember anything, don't remember anything. And he doesn't remember anything. But I remembered then about three years later, I remembered something what happened and um, what it was was um I just remember I was in the bedroom <laughs> I mean it sounds really really far-fetched I just remember this big blue ball came out of the ceiling it just came into the room I don't know how I think it came out of the ceiling just in the room and the next thing I know I'm in this really white place I think it was a ship I don't know uh, but where could it have been I really don't know where but it was everything was completely white just I couldn't even see where joinings were curves were and all I could see I knew there was two beings behind me I could feel one hair and one hair I could feel the presence really strong and they felt quite tall I could feel them and then we were just walking along they never said a word there was no sounds or anything I don't remember any sounds at all and all I could see was plants everywhere like about about two foot high plants, loads and loads and rows, but all very neat and rows and rows like this. And then I heard a voice in my head and the voice, I mean, I, I've thought about it and it was in English and I did understand it. I, I don't know if it was a, it wasn't, I don't think it was telepathy. I don't know. I, it was something different. It, it was like, you don't hear this, you don't hear it. It's like you just know it, you, knowing. in knowing. Yeah. It's like, and I knew they'd said to me, you can ask two questions. So I just said, what, what's, hap what's happening with all these plants? What are you doing? And they just said, they're for the new planet Earth. And I said, oh, okay, just okay, like that. And then carried on walking and it was still all plants and everything. And then we got to a curve and went round. And then I just saw hundreds of people just all standing there with their arms down, just standing, like looking straight ahead like this, not moving, not saying anything. But they looked human people, like all dressed in normal clothes like me, you know, all everybody just dressed like us. And I don't think they were aliens or anything. I think they were humans. And they were just all in a daze. And they took me around to see them. And I saw they were being shown images. Like it wasn't, it wasn't really a screen. It was like more in the air, you know what I mean? Because you couldn't see it from certain angles. I couldn't see it from down there when I was walking up. And when I got closer, I could see what they were watching. And they were being shown these images on the screen. And I just saw one. So I was, there was a woman in front of me. I, I couldn't remember what she was wearing and everything. And I just was sort of looking over her shoulder like this and saw what she was looking at. And they were shown images of the earth. And what I saw was just lovely, lovely, like a video of um, earth, like it was the garden of paradise, fish jumping up all happy 
animals, butterflies, all that kind of thing, that like real image of paradise like that. And you think, oh, lovely, I'd love to be there. You know, it was lovely. But we have that already anyway. But um, it was just lovely and peaceful and everything looked happy. And then suddenly it all went, it, the screen just went like that and this blackness came over and everything. And it looked like, to me, it looked like there was like oily stuff coming up out of the earth, like bubbling, like like a like lava in a way, but it wasn't lava, it wasn't hot, red hot. It was more like oil. So when thinking about it later, to me, it looked like, I was thinking maybe the oil wells are all overflowing and seeping into the earth for years and years and years and no one's repaired them. And it's just suddenly gonna make everything dead. And I just thought that, you know, I was thinking of that. I really don't know what it was, but it seemed to have killed everything. It was in the sea. The fish were all dead, all the animals were dead. I mean, the picture, the image that I saw, there was hooves sticking up at the ground, like animal hooves and things like that. And there was, it didn't look like there was any sun. It looked like very grey and dark and it was just miserable, horrible. And I thought, oh, my God. So I just said, what's happening with all these people? I don't even think that was my question because I think I would have asked what's going on here and what is that catastrophe when is that going to happen or something but I asked about the people what what are you doing with all these people and the voice said they're being categorized and I'm thinking oh, okay and literally that's all I remember I've nothing else came back to me after that it was just those but I've been thinking about it so much that so showing people images and categorizing them what does that mean? Are they going to take them somewhere and send them somewhere? All these humans, are they going to kidnap humans? I don't know. Yes. I've agonized it over a long time. And um, second experience, I don't know if you wanted to ask me anything on that before I move yeah, on to the second I, experience I, I had at this time. Do you think you was a part of that process of watching the, like with the people that were watching, whatever they were watching? Were you, was you a part of that process? No, because I came before, I came after they brought me to sh and showed me the plants and then showed me the people. So I around yeah. and I wasn't part of them for some wow. reason. I don't, maybe I was before and this was a new batch or something, you know, I don't know, but they were showing me things rather than I was part of that zombified. <laughs> But I'm sure I've had my moments. I, I don't know. Maybe I had. Maybe I hadn't. I don't know. I really don't know. So but um, the beans that were behind you, or did you did you get a glimpse of any any beans? Never. They're sort of like like ghosty wisps in a way. You can't get a full image. You just see whew, and like it ghosty bits. And this is what I used to see in my flat in London, you, you'd, I'd see a white thing going like this at the corner of my eye and like a being or something. And, I've, and I, you can see clearly, I can see my hand there, you can see clearly at the corner of your eye. And yeah. I'd see these things so clear. And then my daughter started saying it to me, like, um, I keep seeing things at the corner of my eye. It's like a white, she says, I think it's small, like an animal or something. But the one I saw was child height that kind of height so it could be the same thing and other people have said it to me as well I keep seeing something at the corner of my eye so yeah. annoying because you don't get the full glance if you look it's gone you know yeah. but occasionally I did catch these things on camera you know when you catch an orb or something like that I'd catch the light or a bit of it or something yeah. to prove to me I'm not mad that you know you did see something and there's something yeah. there I mean I don't have to prove it anymore because um, I've had too much proof. And even with the UFOs, I've asked them, you know, okay, if I'm really seeing these, show up tonight and let me see you. And they would show up and I'm like, oh my God. Wow. And I'd keep asking, testing them out. Like, if this is you, come here, come and show me. And they would just show up. I mean, it's when you, that happens, the feeling you get, first of all, it's like, I'm so excited. And it's like amazement that, how far have they traveled through time, through space, through God knows what, where they're coming from. And yeah. then they can find me just saying to them, turn up if to prove something to me, you know? Yeah. It's really strange. I find this really strange. You've got a connection, whatever that might be. There's, there's a strong connection. Yeah. I've realized that now, especially since after 2017, because I, I'm thinking, is it a program? Are they doing tests and but what kind of tests could they be doing on me um 
you know, it's not the family. The family are not having any experiences. So I was thinking, is it lineage? Maybe I'm descending from Stone Age or a caveman and they're following one special bloodline or something. I thought it has to be something like that. I just cannot fathom why they'd be interested in me and other people like this for so long. Because I'm not the only one, let's face it. There's loads. Um, not as many as you'd think, though. I think it's not as many as people are pretending it is. It's not millions and millions and millions of people, I don't think. That would be an epidemic or something, wouldn't it? Of cat yeah. Catastrophic proportions <laughs> if people were getting abducted all over the place. Do you think your your husband and your daughter got taken that night as well? And um, even though we're divorced, we're still friends. And he came to London a few years ago, about three or four years ago, and we met up for dinner. And he said to me, um, I just have to tell you something. He says, you are right all these years. Because he never would remember. And I'd say, surely you must remember me calling you and screaming. And you were in the other room. And I, I was having sleep around us. And I'd be screaming, trying to scream or whatever. And the minute, it's funny, the minute he, someone walks in the room or he'd walk in the room, I'm okay. And then... And I'm back to normal. I'm thinking, oh my God, did you know me? I'm trying to scream. And he's like, no. I said, did you just see something in the room? And he's like, no. So it was that kind of thing. And I, I'd say, you must remember me asking you. And he'd never remember. But then he said to me, um, I remember a lot of things now. And he says, you were right that night. I was, I was there. And he says, we were missing for five hours. And he says, I remember it. But I never got really a chance to talk to them because you had to go back to Australia. We've met some friends and it was a generic party sort of thing. So I never really got he a chance to talk to him, but he's not willing. Yeah, he's, I don't know what he's remember. I'd love to know, but I don't know. Do what would I love to know? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's I just other people are seeing things and I'm around me and I'm not. <laughs> I'm the one that's missing the blanks. What, what so I, you... I really don't know what. what what they're doing because um i mean my daughter has sadly died now so i've no other children so it's not that i have descendants to follow a line it ends here with me so i really don't know it can't be that it can't be the lineage like that yeah. but we do have the rhesus negative blood group my daughter had it i had it, my husband had it and my mom and uh, my mom my dad must have had a bit because when you my mother's family her mother and father both have a b negative and o negative if it was in their family so the sister savage and things all yeah. the boys died in the family all died because i think years ago they didn't recognize the rhesus gene so you wouldn't get that needle you have to get a needle after you have a baby and okay. then the next baby is born normal and okay your body doesn't attack it but in the olden days years ago they didn't know about that so most boy babies died they called him a blue baby it was like your, your own body fights against the baby. It doesn't want to keep the fetus alive. So it's doing everything to kill this poor little fetus. That's it's to retain the blood. Uh, actually, if it's another blood type, it retains, but um, it kills anything that's a different blood group if it's in your body, something like that. It's very strange how it works, but th there's nothing strange in it, really. It is the same blood type. It's just a strain different, a few little molecules different or something like that it is stems from all the same we're, all, we're not inhuman anyone who has a blood type we're still everyone's human it's just i don't know a mutation of some kind or something yeah. which blue eyes are a mutation as well humans are regularly should have brown eyes and the blue eyes came from somewhere we don't know it's like it's like a mutation yeah. it's actually a mutation they call it anyone with not non-brown eyes that goes into green blue or whatever uh, that's me then so, yeah me as well <laughs> well it's a lot of evil actually isn't it yeah, yeah. <laughs> most europe with, with with the abductions and things like that yeah it does seem to be a family thing as well like it's normally in the family so if, if you experience had ghosty things but not alien things yeah okay like uh premonitions premonitions in dreams um signs my uncle and a few of them are very superstitious you get messages from your mom and you know people like that they come back and give them messages i think they do i've had loads myself they give you little signs or when you're thinking about them their favorite song they'll come on just by accident you think, know oh, that just come on yeah. there little things like that i think that is them saying hello and i'm here i do for yeah. sure yeah, i don't believe definitely. in coincidences anymore 
Because it happened too often. Oh, it's so many, isn't it? Well, they say a coincidence once, twice, or three times. It's a pattern, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what, what um, was the, the, happened? Sorry. Uh, what was the next missing time event that happened? That's what I was going to say. I'll go into the next one. Um, the next one, sadly, my sister died as well of cancer. And it was the day before she died. I just, we'd been at the hospital. And um, my uncle was staying with me. And we went, just came home late and very upset because they told us she's not going to live beyond another day. You know, she's going to be gone tomorrow, basically, to say all your goodbyes and everything. But luckily, we did that day when she died that night. But um, I was just, I was so upset. I was at the window smoking a cigarette. My uncle had gone to bed. And I just saw this. I was just thinking, oh, I wish I could have a sister. And I was just thinking, you know, the things you do, someone's dying. And I just saw this red light went across the sky right in front of me, one side to the other. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. And I thought, if that's you, my alien friends, and I was thinking, can you help my sister? You know, please, please. She'll be within your power. She'll be very easy for you. She doesn't want to die. And she's got kids and everything, you know, and all this. And then um, just talking like that. Next of all, I was on the fourth floor and I'm overlooking this way. Normally I see everything out there. Suddenly this UFO it must have came from behind me that way and just sort of came like this. And I just happened to see the nose stuck out over my building. I'm at the window. And I just happened to look up. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I couldn't believe it was only very, it was very low, like just I don't know how it can be so low, just above the building. The building was actually six floors, so it was above that. Another, I, I can't even judge. I would say 20 or 30 feet, but that might be misjudging. It might be 100 feet, I don't know. But it seemed very low to me. I could see absolutely everything. I had, it wasn't a smooth craft. I don't know if it was, somebody said to me, it might have been open, I don't know. But it had loads of lights, little tiny lights, things spinning, loads of stuff going on, like something of Independence Day. I'm not joking. And this was, it was the triangle I saw later when it came out. It did come out then after, like this. And it was over, we ha I was overlooking the garden. So it came out over the garden. And it was just in front of me then. But when it was there, I was looking up. It's just, oh, I couldn't even draw it. There was just so much going on, so much technology on it. It wasn't like, phew, little, this was oh, something big and amazing. The lights and the things going on. So I grabbed my phone and I'm thinking, I had a grin from ear to ear because I'm just, I've never seen anything that low or that detailed. I was just gobsmacked. And I'm laughing, oh my God, no one's gonna believe this. And I was trying, my uncle, he has sleep apnea, so he sleeps with his mask on, and once he's asleep, he's gone. So I'm trying to hold my camera and ta knock on the wall or something so I'd wake up. And I'm, what do I do? And I thought, I just wanna watch it. So I just watched it. I didn't wanna waste time, even take, I do, do remember I got my phone and I thought I filmed it for four minutes. That was my memory. I thought I really, the red button, the red light was on as an old, oldest phone was on and everything. And I saw it recording and I know I recorded it, but it wasn't on my phone afterwards. It was just gone. But um, I thought that's what happened. I saw this amazing craft. I filmed it. And then it came out to the middle of the garden, as I said, and just stayed there for a minute and up above. And then it just glided really slowly to like over the rooftop and then just... It was just unbelievable. I could not believe what I was, what I'd seen. I just could not. I've got it on the camera. Got on, and I picked up my phone's on the floor for some reason. Picked the phone off the floor, and there was about a, a millisecond of it, a light just come like that. A strange light, be it, but nothing. That's it. And I thought, oh my, that's terrible. How did that happen? You know, I thought I filmed it. Nothing there. So I thought that that was my memory. I'd seen it for minutes, filmed it, didn't get it. Saw this amazing craft from my uncle the next morning, all happy. And I thought maybe are they? I don't know. You know, why did they come last night? Just for what reason would they have come like that? But I got the memories back about two years or so later. I remember being on a craft now that night. Definitely remember. And I think I must have dropped my phone straight away and it went off or something. I remember going into the craft, like floating up, going into the craft, and it was a lovely. Normally, I didn't remember any of the feelings or anything. It's like 
you just get a memory flash and did that really happen? Oh my God. And then it just annoys you and annoys you and annoys you and doesn't go away. And you know, you think it must have really happened, must have really happened. Things have that must be a memory. And then you're thinking, then the rest comes and you think, oh my God. And I think part of your subconscious wants to hide it and think you don't want to remember. It's a bit of that as well. Something, oh God, do I want to remember what if they've done anything to me? Do I want to know? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm living with enough already. Do I need any more? So I'm finding out slowly little bits. And maybe I think they're very good at doing, at drip feeding you if they think you're going to not handle it well, maybe or something. But I think I can handle it well. I've handled it for years, all weird stuff and things like that and coping with it on my own. But anyway, I'll carry on with the story. And what I remember was got into the I remember seeing I was in a control room, got into this control room, but it wasn't very big. But there was just, oh, so much going on. Loads of lights, screens, boards, all flashing, loads of stuff. The whole, everything around me was just lights flashing and things spinning and really high-tech stuff. I couldn't even try to draw it. I, maybe if I go under deep his nose, his nose, I might be able to describe it more, but I just remember loads going on. And then I just remember myself in this big white room with a big desk, the desk in it. And, and then suddenly the desk was round, like, like lovely marble, white marble. And like the room was made of the same stuff. Um, and then I remember there was five shapes. They were like they weren't, there's no features, couldn't see arms, legs, eyes, things like that, but they had head, shoulders, like that, you know what I mean? Well, and I they, were made, they were made of golden light, just golden light, like, wow. I like to call, I, I changed my mind to call them entities, I call them energy beings, because this, they were full of energy, just kind, different kinds of energy than what we have, and it was, oh, they were just so amazing, but I just felt this rush of love. Oh my God. And I felt I knew them. I felt they knew me very well. If they were family or old friends or, and I hadn't seen them in a long time. And it's like, oh my God, I'm so thrilled to see you. And that kind of reception. And, but they didn't even have any eyes or anything. It was just the light. Then one stretched out hand. There was five different sizes, family, some were medium sized and the other two, I'd say about six foot or seven foot, maybe a bit taller than humans slightly, you know, and some were smaller. So I don't know, if it looked like a little family to me, to be honest, and mom and dad and two kids. Could be wrong, they could be women and men or whatever. It's just in my mind now, I'm just thinking it looked like a little family. But um, I, it, one of them, small one, put out this hand and I just took the hands instantly straight away. And that minute, oh my God, I was sucked in like, and it just all swirled around. I just remember swirling and swirling and swirling around. It's big white swirls. And then the next thing I know, I'm like a particle in space or something. It was just, you're floating around, seeing galaxies and everything. And I knew I was part of them, like a connecting conscious, basically, consciousness with them. And I knew what they knew. It was like, I knew everything. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> know everything. And it was, oh, it was just the happiness and the love and everything I felt was just, it was just amazing out of this world. And it was just wanted to continue forever. And then next thing I know, I'm, it's gone and I don't remember anything that's it so I just remember that and wow. I'm left with that and that I needed that because a lot of the stuff I've had uh, negative feelings and scariness and all that and that was just to me just I needed it badly and to just show me maybe they're not uh, what I'm thinking they are but if they are that like that, why haven't they been like that all the time and showing me that when I was a child and I would have been fine for years and had little trips with them and done all sorts. But the fear that brought years ago, I, I, why did I live in fear for so long? Why did they let me is another question. So what's that all about? Is it two different groups? I find that unlikely. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, it sounds like 
it could be two different entities going against each other, possibly. But I mean, you've you've put that message out there about your sister. Yeah. Uh, and they've helped you. That's how it feels. Like they've come to you and they've helped you. Maybe. Helped me, but they didn't help my sister. You know? yeah. Maybe they were showing me. I thought another thing. Maybe they were showing me a bit of life after death, showing me she's yeah. nothing to worry about. Yeah. I mean, I thought of that. And they were just showing me this is what it's going to be like. She will be happy. Don't worry. Yeah. And fine. I think, you know, I think that could be it, you know. Because well. what you explained there, I've heard people talk about. Uh, Deaf experiences where they pass for a certain amount of time and they've actually experienced going to the other side and that is very similar to what they felt. I know, yeah, I thought that myself as well. But um, there was a funny thing. I read a CIA document that was released um, in year 2000 or something. I did a little video. I'll send it a clip later. I did a little video about it, 10 minutes or something. But it's um, a CIA document that was released uh, on the, on the release, I don't know, after 20 years or something, but it's from a Russian military base and um, where they had a UFO, an alien experience. And they reckoned there were five aliens as well and in the base and they got hostile and they, whatever they did to the men in the base, there were 20 or 30 soldiers. They all, they all joined into a big swirl, swirled around and everyone that saw the swirl was in that vicinity was turned to stone, complete limestone of some kind. And this is um, a leaked document, and it's a proper document, proper report from the USSR at the time. And um, so it just reminded me, I never heard that. I found that years later, this paper, and I thought, oh my God, that's roughly what I experienced, a swirl, swirling around. This is what the aliens did. They could they come join together, maybe, and this is what the witnesses said there were two witnesses that didn't get turned to stone that was able to record it but they kept all the bodies and moved them to the base and they've never come back to life or anything that it is a they said it's very similar to limestone the condensity and everything wow um, of that so that scared me a bit so are they dangerous <laughs> i think that they've obviously got i mean we we can go up against them if they've got these these abilities uh, they will, you know they can do what they want to us they know? can read your thoughts as well i think they can read people's thoughts i don't know if it's just the people that maybe the but or if it's everybody if that's everybody that's some you know yeah. bit of technique to have a bit of hardware you've got there to run a you know a world especially this world yeah. and brainwash and put my you know wipe out your memories um, missing time, all this, they can do all this kind of stuff. And I think they can actually separate your spirit from your body as well. If they abduct you, I think they can be in bed. So nobody misses you. You're probably asleep or something. Yeah. And nobody knows, you know, the wiser. So I think it can happen without you even knowing. Yeah. I mean, I've had times coming home from work. I used to work in Shepherd's Bush and it's only about a 10 minute drive from Kensington. And um, I'd be three hours. And my husband would be like, where the hell have you been? I'm like, I don't know, I'm just driving home. Yeah. What, what that is, it's nine o'clock, I'm like, it can't be nine o'clock. And he'd be like, you know, this is weird. And I, there'd be something wrong with the car, it, either something would be broken on it, the wing mirror would be bent back or something like that. And I didn't suss that out for years. I think, well, they could be taking me while I'm driving down Shepherd's Bush Road and no one, they can hide it from everybody in the public. This is the kind of things they can do. So if they wanted to take over this world tomorrow, I'm sure they could easily and have us all like zombies or whatever they want to have maybe, us. Maybe they already oh. have. I don't know if... Uh, maybe. <laughs> Explain a lot. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that is so true. Because I, I've, heard, um, I've been talking to a lot of people about this recently and a, a number that keeps coming up is possibly one in four people could get abducted and don't even know it, which yeah. I find interesting. I mean, I'm... I mean, I've had sleep paralysis. Is that connected to being abducted? I don't know, but it sounds like... It I think it must be. I think it must be. Maybe not in every case. There, there is definitely a disorder of sleep paralysis, but I think this is slightly different. I don't know if they see the bright lights and things like that. What happens afterwards? Do they wake up quickly or... I normally, I, I mean, I've heard noises in my bedroom and like seen the light come on or something. I'm like waiting for the door to open and then I fall asleep. 
And I'm like, how on earth would you fall asleep? My <laughs> adrenaline's all up there. My heart's going like this, waiting yeah. for something to happen, and I fall asleep. It's And then it'd be next morning, and then it'd be probably an hour or two before I remember, and then I'd be thinking, oh, shit, what was that last night? And yeah. then I'd think, I remember that. And why did I fall asleep? Why? It's not like me. I'd get up. Yeah. And, or hide under the covers or yeah. anytime I was creeped out I do get up all the time I've even walked into rooms in the dark just to see what the noise was and I heard a smash and you think on horror movies you know why are they doing that that's ridiculous you don't you do, yeah. I do that all the time I think we do do that creep around in the dark see what it is yeah. Yeah. I get to put the lights on I don't know why so I've done that many times um, so that's what I would do when I hear a noise or something the light comes on by itself i'll actually go and confront it but not just fall asleep but it's been a few times when it's just, and then it's the next morning before you know and i think that wasn't normal i wouldn't remember all the time but occasionally i've had a few and i remember i think something happened last night so going back to when you was a child and yeah. you would see things coming through your walls did you say yeah i used to just call them people um but i i saw and hair and lovely faces and very pretty very beautiful and not scary really i don't know why i was screaming but maybe it's the fact they were coming out of the wall that scared me i don't know what yeah. used to frighten me but i have memories of those or did they implant those memories to make me think oh it's lovely persons whatever why would that be screaming in terror and i think it was the witch as well that used to really terrify me because that used to happen a few times it happened quite a few times i remembered that for a while so that was connected was, to the, the sleep paralysis as well, was it? No, 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 just to get that separate. That was separate to sleep paralysis. It wasn't, oh. unless I didn't know what sleep paralysis was at the time. I don't remember. I was that young. I don't really remember not being able to move. I really don't remember. It could have been a few guess sleep paralysis as a child like that. I don't know. Yeah. I've never heard of children getting it. Yeah, because I don't remember getting it as a child. Maybe I did, but I don't. Yeah. I wasn't, a, when I say a child, I think I was probably more like 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 8, 9, 10, those ages. But before yeah. that, it was the witch and people coming out of the wall. But this witch used to, like, I used to think she was coming out of the ceiling. And then sometimes she'd just roll her hair down. And oh, so creepy. The hair would have a life of its own and come around my neck. And you know, how can I even think of something like that? And grab me on my neck and pull me up and like pulling me up towards the ceiling like this. And oh, I don't know if it was a dream or not. I think it was real. It was terrifying. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And then obviously with, with the metal that was in your legs. Yeah. Very with everything that you've experienced in your life. That's yeah. very interesting that you had that. I know it's scary. I, I forgot about it. My mom I bet you wish you could have that metal just to analyze it, see what it was. I've had a couple of things removed because I had one in my jaw as well. Um, I had a little lump on my jaw and it really bothered me. And I thought, what was that lump just come there? And I went to the dentist and he said, there's something down under your tooth down here. And um, did you have work done? I did have a broken tooth and had a pin put in. He says, maybe they left the piece in. So I'll go back to your dentist, tell him. So I went back to him and he said, no, I didn't leave anything in. He took an X-ray and he said, um, I put a two millimeter pin. You can see it's still there in the tooth. I don't know what that is down there further. So they said they had to take it out anyway and had to come out under an operation. So when he opened me, he said, um, he's going to have to take the tooth out first. Then he said, well, I'll go under the gum. It's a bit of extra trouble, but you'll save your tooth because it's not bad or anything. So he went down, right down under my tooth. And when he opened me up, he said, oh, I can't take that out he said it's entwined a little roundy piece of tiny like a little ball bearing or something like that entwined in all my facial nerves that come around this way all here yeah. and he said if i touch that you'd be paralyzed in your face or something you get locked or whatever he says i can't really do it can't take it out wow. so what they decided was they could cut a bit, bit bit of my bone out a little piece of my bone and my jaw and put this rubber thing in because your jaw bone grows back apparently so when the jaw bone grows back it'll push the rubber thing out knock the thing away from my nerves and they'd be able to remove it that way so it was a good plan because it worked and they were able to get it out but he stuck the thing up i was expecting him to take it out like a, a bullet and put it in the dish you know ding but he used a suction thing and it was gone so people were saying did you not ask for it 
And I said, well, I assumed it would just be in the dish and then I could take it, you know. Yeah. I didn't realise he was going to suck it up like that. But um, when he'd finished, he, he said it was like tiger country. That was his words. It was like tiger country in there. It was about an hour and a half of him doing all sorts. And I'm lying there and, oh, my God. It was literally a nightmare. It was horrible. You know, really, when you go to a dentist, it's five minutes, isn't it? Ten minutes or whatever. The worst thing. It's overdone. This went on and on and on and on over an hour. And I'm in bits so anyway he went home all done he said that's all done got it out it should all heal up now it's fine because he did say get it out because it will cause problems later on it might do it's better to get it out now you see it there and because he thought it was just a piece of debris from the other dentist anyway but it wasn't but anyway um after nine o'clock i'm waiting for my face to come back to normal you know after the injections and nothing's happening and I'm like, oh god i want a cigarette and i want to have a cup of coffee and you can't move and all this <laughs> and nothing happened it was still there next morning woke up in the morning oh it's still there it's still frozen and i thought oh my god and it was the weekend so i couldn't really and then I had to wait till Monday. It was still like that on Monday. Like the Novocaine just did not wear off. Mm -hmm. And I rang him up. Or I rang the hospital over the weekend. And I said, I think I'm paralyzed something. My face told him what happened. It's not come back. Is it that normal that you don't recover from Novocaine? And they said no. And all the study books, they said it mentioned it once. I mean, two surgeons came on the phone to me. And they didn't know. And they were talking to each other. And um, he said it, they cover it in the, in the books but none of them have ever come across it, that there's a tiny, slight possibility that you're allergic to Novocaine, but most people aren't. But they have to say there's a slight, and they said you might be that slight one. But yeah. called, they said, you better go back to the dentist. So went back to him and he said, I've never come across this before. And he, he was sticking needles in me, I couldn't feel anything. It was horrible, my lips and everything here. Couldn't feel a thing. Anyway, it just went on. I was having weekly visits, there was nothing happening. And four months later, it just came back by itself one day. But he said, there's nothing I can do because he took more x-rays and he said, there's nothing damaged. I can't see any damage. Your nerves are fine. They could be a little bit bruised. That's all I can suggest. They might be bruised from all the work I was doing. But he said, I can promise you I haven't damaged the nerves or yeah. you know about it. It'd be a lot worse than that. He says, but I really don't know why the Novocaine hasn't worn off. Yeah. But this is something Daryl Sims was, has spoken about. I've spoken to him about, I heard him talk about it and contacted him and said, this has happened to me. Yeah. And he just said, contact a UFO researcher. <laughs> he wasn't that much help. But so it just, that's another thing. Just struck me, thought, oh God, is this another thing now? And so then, um, so you shouldn't get what? paralyzed. Sorry. Did they find out what the, what, what it was that they took out? No, because they, they sucked it up in the thing and that's gone in the rubbish or somewhere, isn't it? And okay. where it goes, I don't know where they, the blood and everything that would go yeah. somewhere. That they yeah. were in incinerators and all that. But I just assumed he was going to take it out with the tweezers. This is what I thought. And I put it in a little bowl, but he didn't. So it surprised me when he got the thing and I thought, oh, shit, that's gone now. Yeah. I know. But um, I've also had sinus problems as well. I mean, I don't get ill, never get flu, anything, chest infections, any kind of infection, never had any kind of infection really, but I just had this sinus infection a couple of years ago, would not go away, and I ended up uh, being hospitalised for 10 days, it spread to all my face and my blocks, all my everything up there, and then I had an abscess on my throat, and it nearly blocked my windpipe, so I actually nearly died, but when they were doing the operation on my nose, they said there's some damage to my inside of my nose here like a hole or something and they said it might have been caused by the infection cartilage damage up there i've never had any damage on my nose so i don't take cocaine or anything like that so <laughs> it's not from that <laughs> i know people lose their noses but it's all on the they give me all the papers at the hospital and things like that so just those strange things i tend to keep notes on and try to keep it but the strange things like that that um, i i get to go to to wear them oh i don't know i don't know and then there's my eye the one on my eye as well i woke up with this metal thing sticking out of my eye i'll send really? you the photographs for that and that was something unknown as well it was just yeah another thing i was filming funny enough i filmed ufo the morning about five o'clock in the morning lovely black one right outside my window and then i went to bed so i only slept for about three hours because i was up again by nine or something like that and i just 
caught my reflection in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, I nearly passed out. My eye was completely blood, just blood. And I nearly fainted. I thought I was having a brain hemorrhage or something. And um, when I looked, there was something sticking out, a metal V thing like that. Mm. And I thought, oh my God, I rang my doctor straight away. But I couldn't feel anything. Couldn't feel a thing. Nothing, not even sore, nothing. And um, called my doctor straight away and told him, he said, oh, you better come down, let me have a look. So it's only down the road. So I ran, my daughter took a picture first straight away and I ran down to the doctor. And But by the time I got there, whatever the thing was, it wasn't there. It had gone inside my eye or gone out or something. I think it went inside, it didn't come out. So I didn't find it anywhere. But um, it was healed over, it had a little cut and everything. The cut was healed over because I took photographs when I got back as well. And you could see there was a little slit and it's healing over straight away like that. Yeah. But he said to me, have you been deep sea diving, fishing, or anything like that, or deep sea diving? I said, no. In London, hardly likely, and can't swim. <laughs> and um, he said, it looks like there's, he said, there's nothing to worry about. It's not an infection. You don't need any treatment. It's just a burst blood vessel or something. And it's like the result of the pressure behind the eye. Did you sneeze very hard? And I said, no. He said, we haven't been diving or anything. He said, I don't know what would cause that, but it, don't worry about it. It'll go away after a few weeks. Did you tell him about the metal that was... Um, I, I did say something. I didn't know it was a piece of metal. I just said there was a thing sticking out. Is that there? He said, there's nothing there now. I said, there was a horrible thing sticking out. I don't know. I think I probably did say a grey thing or silver yeah. thing sticking out. And he said, no, there's nothing there now. He said, I can't see anything. There's no damage, hardly. He said, there's nothing there. It's just red and bloody. And I can send you the photographs how it was left. And yeah. the met I have a photograph. So I got one photograph with a bad camera which has the thing sticking. And then the next photo is what I got back. We used a better camera. And um, you can see I took really close up ones. And I had the, I had a friend, a professor, and he, he analyzed and he has another friend, a professor who's an eye doctor, an eye consultant. And he asked him to have a look at them for me. And I said, that'd be great. So he said there was something like, I sent him all the images and even, um, I had an MRI scan for something else, for some headaches I was having, and it shows my eyes and everything, and it does show something wrong with my eye. He said, it looks like I've had a surgery on my eye, which I haven't. And he said, there are four things wrong with my eye, and he lists them out in the letter, but he says, I, I don't want you giving my name out. I don't want to get involved in UFO stuff or anything like that. He says, but this is my finding. It's but you can use it, but don't use my name. So I said, it's fine. I mean, it was Dr. Dr. Young Hai Chi from Oxford University I was working with for a while. It was a friend of his. What, what connection did he make with the, the UFOs and the eye? What, what did he say the connections were? He didn't say there were any connections. He says um, there's something highly on something. What did you? I'll have to send you the copy of the email as well because he lists out five different things. One of them I remember, he said it's not homogenous. The liquid in my eye is not homogenous. I think that what that means is it's not local to my eye. It's something yeah. else being put in there, something like that. And another one was my retina was uh, moved away from the eye um, and something else, a few things like that that yeah. shouldn't be there. And even though it wasn't an infection or anything, and it looked like I'd had some surgery on the eye. And it looks like in the MRI scan, which I think I have 35 images, and maybe 10 of them are of the face and the skull. I think it was for my sinuses, actually. That's what it was for, um, with the headaches and my nose and everything. And um, it shows uh, one of my eyes doesn't have a lens. <laughs> and he said, you should be blind in one eye. <laughs> wow. And I've got perfect eyesight. Never had any problems. Never had an eye infection, a sty, anything, nothing. So you this is back, another thing. Going back to when you was a little girl, when you had the two... Metal things in your leg. You no, said there's one, me one metal thing, but oh, they cut one. me twice. They cut me twice because it, mo it moved. It moved. So then they had to cut me off the side as well to get it out. So yeah. you'll see the scars, two cuts like that side so by side. Did you say it moved? Was that? Well, yeah. my mum said they just cut me where they could. They made the incision where the X-ray would have been, and um, the object wasn't there when they opened me. It moved to the side of my leg, so, so they had to cut. Then they got it in the wrong place, and they had to X-ray me again, and then they found it at the side. 
It's so like it's I, moving inside your body. Yeah, it moves around, yeah, in the body. And then you've got the thing in your eye that possibly moved as well. Yeah. <laughs> Could be still in there. Could yeah. be a little camera, little bionic eye. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so just, just those odd things. Uh, I don't know if I think... I, I don't think they need implants. I really don't know. I Do they really need to have implants on you? Because how they know where you are and everything else. I must have more then in that case, because that's two I got out. But I wouldn't recommend anything. If anybody finds anything, leave it alone. Just leave it. I would never get anything touched again. Wouldn't let anyone touch anything. Even if I had 20 of them, I don't care. <laughs> they can stay where they are. It's yeah. so much, because they, they, what they do, I think the implants, they become part of your body and become your tissue starts growing around it. And then your nerves start entwining. So what's that doing to your nervous system? What is it? What yeah. is that doing to your nervous system or anything? Yeah. It must be doing something. Yeah. And your body doesn't find it an alien or anything. It finds it because it's becoming part of your body. So it will never reject it. So they've got, they've worked that out. If we, we could use that in operations and things like that, couldn't we? When your yeah. body rejects things. They've, obviously mastered that so interesting yeah. so do you think you are possibly getting abducted regularly and you don't even know about it well it's it's possible it really is possible but i wish i could remember but um i don't think so i think you get a strange feeling or i'd know when there was missing time because there's another missing time i had as well actually this is an interesting one um, I'll tell you that first. I was uh, going out with this fella, and um, we'd just come back from the cinema. I was only, only knew him a couple of weeks, actually. So we'd have the pictures and came back. And I opened a bottle of wine, had a glass of wine each, sitting on the sofa, had an L-shaped sofa. So he was sitting there, I was sitting here. And I was sort of saying something. I had my glass like that, and he knocked my elbow by mistake when he was talking, and the drink just went all over me. And um, it just went all over my friend and I, he jumped up. Oh my God, I'm sorry. And I jumped up. I'll get tissues or whatever. And when I got up, it was dry, completely dry. It was nowhere to be found. The wine was gone. It was like, where did it go? Where the hell did it go? It was a leather sofa. There was nothing on the floor, no drops, not even one drop anywhere. And he was like, what the hell? What the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? I mean, it was wow. no warning, no funny thing. I just got up to wipe my top and that's it. So yeah. it was like, did they pause you or something and then press rewind and yeah. play again? Something you like both, that. You both had the and missing time. Both had the missing time. And then it was half 11 because I lived near the cinema. It wasn't far. It was only 10 minute walk or something, five minute walk. Got back. So I know it was about half 11. And then suddenly he said, it's a quarter four in the morning. I'm like, no way, it can't be quarter four, that's wrong or something. And we checked the time, it's quarter four in the morning. He was like, what the hell just happened? This is freaky. And he went home after that, never saw him again. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I think something definitely happened there. Yeah. And, but it was like no feeling of grogginess, no, nothing. Like just in real time. Yeah. You just and, flash you know, and it was, it was, I've had a couple of those like that, actually. So I don't know. But you think you'd remember. Oh, I don't know. I don't like not remembering. It's such a yeah. weird feeling. Yeah. And but so many people years. say it. So many yes. people say that, that they don't have the memory. And then something will happen and they'll get a flashback. Yeah. Or, they, or they do the regression. And yeah. then it's that way. But it's so interesting. Yes. Have you had any experiences yourself? I, I've seen UFOs. I've seen a lot of UFOs, yeah. things in the sky that I can't explain. Um, I don't think I've had any missing time. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think yeah. I've had that. I used to have sleep paralysis. So if there was a connection there, possibly. Um, I, I have sleep. I used to get sleep paralysis in my old flat once a week, at least once a week. I wouldn't I wish that my worst enemy. All horrible. the time. Yeah, it was really weird. But all the time. And, and I've had it about probably three or four times where I am now. In my new yeah. house. So I don't get it very I often. Read about, uh, sorry. 
I read about it when I got it first at the beginning. I thought I need to do a bit of research and it's what is it and it gave you four theories the first theory was that you were working really long hours and your brain just didn't switch off and I was at the time I was really working long hours it was during the end of the year and all that you know you got all the crap and I was head of finance so I had such a lot to do and I was working till 3 a.m 4 a.m stuff like that so I thought that would be my that would be me and then the second one was um aliens are abducting you and you're just waking up beforehand and it's before they get you and that was another theory and then the third theory was that it's actually true that you, some entity is coming into your room and there is something there and they've caught some on film that, that there was a man that was getting it all the time there were a few examples and he was saying his covers keep drag, getting dragged off in the night and all this and they put them all in these uh controlled rooms to watch them and monitor them and something was pulling the covers off him. it freaked me out Wow. something was pulling the covers off his bed because he was saying he was seeing the witch or something else like that horrible ghoul coming to kill him and all this when he was under the sleep paralysis yeah. and um, and it started by them pulling the covers off his bed and somebody you could see it very clear it wasn't him he was fast asleep lying on his back something reefed the covers off and yeah. so there was a few things that they proved wasn't to do with working long hours so, I, so i'm thinking oh my god i wanted to go with that one you know yeah, yeah. but um to be honest, that, read, that's what i used other... to put mine down to i used to put it down to i'm stressed at work I, I used to work quite i still work long hours but i used to work yeah. long hours. and I, that's what i used to put it down to i used to think oh, i'm just just tired stressed yeah. out but so, yeah, yeah. Nah. so there could be something in it I just so. yeah but I remember I just used to argue. I used to have argue with whatever this thing was. I used to just, in my mind, shout, yeah. swear at it, and tell it to leave. And you know, you know, what I, mean? I was too busy panicking. Oh my God, help me! Oh, what's yeah. this? Too busy. It's terrifying. That. It's it's terrifying. Yeah, it's horrible, terrifying. Oh, interesting stuff. So, is there any other experiences you've had to share? Um. Not really. I mean, there's loads. So I can't really remember at the moment. <laughs> probably something, you know, I'll remember probably later. Oh, I should have told this one. I, have told. I think I've told you all the main ones, really. Oh, there's two things, um, the paranormal ones. And, well, the first one I said was the face, my mum's face in the orb. Oh, but yes. the second one was um, my sister-in-law passed away as well, unfortunately. Everybody dying around me. Um, and we were very close. She lived down the road. She lived in Earl's Court, five minutes from me. And we used to see each other quite a lot. So I was quite upset. I was quite close to her. But she died uh, suddenly as well. But um, one day, I don't know if you've heard of this eye thing. It's called visual migraines. I mean, look it up on YouTube. But I started, it's like you see a zigzag in your eye and rainbows coming out of everything. It's like probably tripping or something. I don't know what tripping is like, but, you know, colors and things like this. And I thought I was going blind again. So I started taking, when my, I felt my eye going a bit funny like that, I would take photos just to see if my eye was changing. But I've since read, it's called visual migraine and it's just another form of migraine. You don't get the headaches. You just, it just affects your eyes when your eyes are tired. And I'm always up late and all that. So my eyes are always tired. So again, I put it down to that. It's something new that people are getting. But it's, it knocks you out. It doesn't knock you out, but you can't actually walk and do anything for about 15, 20 minutes and then it goes away. So you couldn't drive or anything like that. It's really weird. And somebody's done a few videos on YouTube and he's really caught it exactly what it is. And I thought, wow, that's what I'm getting. So I checked with the doctor. It's not serious. Instead of a migraine headache, you get a visual one. So I was getting that and I was taking pictures of my eye. And some, sometimes my pupils are changing. But in one picture, well, I took three pictures. Um, there's a face looking out of my eye. <laughs> Wait, <it's>, wow. <laughs> I, I nearly faint. I'm like, oh my god! And it's my sister-in-law's face. It's so clear. It is so clear. Oh, and she died probably two months before. But what the hell is that? That's amazing. I'll send you the pictures, and you can see. I mean, there's no way I could fake that. No, it's just too clear. And I, you can see. I've taken. I think there are five pictures, and two are my pupil going a bit smoky and a bit 
out of shape like that. And then the other three, that well, there's two clear faces. And then the third one, you can see it fading away. It's so weird. And it's clearly Hannah, my sister-in-law, clearly her. It's so, what does that mean even? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> so it's like uh, maybe trying to connect to you somehow and show you that she's you or something. Yeah. But that's amazing. Is she looking out through me or... Yeah. I don't know what that, I really don't know what that means. I've never come across them before, ever. Never no, heard that. Heard of anyone ever saying that. No. And, um, but when you see the pictures, you'll be amazed. I'll send them all to your Twitter just after we finish no. this. Thank you very I'll send much. A few things. So you took a picture and, uh, of your eye, and that's what. My happened. eye, yeah, like that. And in my pupil, my black pupil. Yeah. When you, you don't even have to zoom in, you can see it very clear in normal eye. That's you incredible. can see the face. And it's clearly Hannah. She had distinctive looks because my ex husband was Arabic. And so she yeah. had dark, dark eyes and a bit of a nose. You can see it really clear. She has these distinctive Cleopatra kind of looks. That's amazing. <laughs> you can see it very clear. Yeah. I'd like to know what that means. If anyone else yeah. has experienced yeah. that. Yeah. Get in touch with us. If you've had that experience, yeah. know anyone that's had, get in touch with us because that is, yeah, I've not heard that before. Wow. Yeah. So you, I, with the orbs as well, um, I never really, I don't really look at things through filters or anything like that, but people on, on Twitter do, when I post an orb, there's some people that love orbs and they'll use different filters, they're finding all these faces in mine, and, but one definitely was my mum, but that was when I was in Sri Lanka and I was really grieving for my daughter that time, went to Sri Lanka to get away from everything and it was great and it did me the world good. But it means my mum was with me over there because I got this lovely red orb flying around the room and this is the one the girl found my mum's face in and it's just uncanny. It's just, it's so clear. I've showed yeah. it to all the family and I'm like, God, even there's a curl down here, the way she had that one curl at the side because she's having her pinned up and she'd have one little bit there. Even that's in the picture, in wow. the, the image. It's just so that means, well, obviously there's an afterlife, I, I'm glad to say. Yeah. I get loads of signs, we all do in our family. Because we all promise each other, I'll come back. If I can come back, I'm going to come back and give you and frighten the life out of you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a bit jokerish cool. like that. Yeah, that's so, cool. Um, I think my mom has given us a few frights and things like that. And my brother's always losing his wallet. Uh, always. His head, his head is all over the place, normally. Don't know what he'll be doing. But um, if I were everywhere now and it'll just turn up on the table oh mum put it there i'm like yeah right. yeah yeah they do yeah. say that it happens you things go missing and you think where is it going? just turn up there it's right under your nose yeah, yeah. it happens that. all the time i think it happens yeah. to everybody doesn't it yeah yeah it's amazing though about your mum in the picture but it made me it just gave me a nice feeling to feel that she was with me when i was in sri lanka you know yeah, and saw yeah. everything and what I was seeing and all the lovely, you know, I had a great time over there. It's lovely sights and people and everything. So I had a really good time. So I'm glad she saw it. I mean, she was there seeing it. Yeah. Tagging <laughs> along. Yeah. yeah. So you saw the red orb in the in your room? It was just, yeah, it's on video. It's a video. And it just, um, I did see one first and then I got my camera and then I just, I said, hello, anybody there? And it just came out. I'm in a, mosquito net on the bed and it comes through the other side of the mosquito net and comes through comes through the net so it can't be an insect or anything like that and yeah. it's a lovely red one i've seen the red one a few times i'm just wondering all those other red ones are they my mum as well i yeah. must ask my friend to have a look yeah that's awesome yeah i don't know if i've said this on the show before i probably have but when my granddad first passed but well, we was obviously it was all very sad uh, and we went to the zoo um, Colchester Zoo and uh, we spent the day there and I think my mum was she said she was feeling sad that day obviously still thinking about my granddad and stuff yeah. and we were taking pictures with the old cameras we had to get the uh, the film developed so we didn't get the picture straight away but she was taking all pictures that day and she took a picture of a lion beautiful picture of the lion and I've still got this picture somewhere and in the picture there was like another picture of my granddad like clearly like it was yeah. Just like another little picture of him was in the picture. Yeah. Really weird. How did he do that? Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So it's there's amazing. something in that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Well, it's nice for us to know that there is something afterwards. At yeah. least it's a confirmation, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Just wonder what these bloody aliens are up to. What yeah. do you think they're up to? I don't know. It's so hard to... Because so many people have this experience. So many people experience yeah. what they've experienced. Um, and yeah, I they do. There's, there's a lot of people that don't even know it's happening to them. Sure, there are, yeah. Because I... Uh, I could have gone through years without even knowing, because especially with that one with the wine, if something like that, you just wouldn't think missing time. You wouldn't even no. think about it, would you? You just think time has flown. I mean, I don't wear a watch. I haven't worn a watch in years. So I have no concept of time. I just try and when I've got appointments, I keep them and that's it, really. But other than that, I, could, I eat any time of the day. I'm not really a routine person. I eat when I'm yeah. hungry. It could be midnight or something like that or... Two yeah. in the afternoons, just when I'm hungry, I'll eat things. But yeah. so I don't have a, a routine. So I, I could be missing all day, and I wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother thinks I'm out in the garden doing the gardening. I, I'm missing. It'd be so hard to tell, though, isn't it? If you don't know, it is. Yeah, if they wipe your memory that easily. Yeah. And but I think they let you know. I mean, they started letting me see more, and especially the ships, I get lovely orange orbs. They're, I love those ones, they're lovely. And I've had some really nice little craft and things like that. Yeah. And some of them are beautiful colors and lovely, like just lovely colors that you wouldn't see something in the sky with all them lovely colors like that. Yeah. You know, so other than the, the triangle ship that you saw that took you, yeah. have you seen any other close up craft? No, I'm not close like that. I mean, up as far as a helicopter, yeah, loads. I get loads. And I've yeah. taken loads of things like that. Like little... And I have two little wings like that, but they're light. And when it turns that way, you'll just see the light, and it looks like an orb. But when yeah. it turns sideways, it's a little black craft with two lights on the side like that. So I've taken some... I've got a few of those to show that, like, this is not really an orb. And it turns into black craft. And I've noticed as well, the black craft... The, the orbs can actually change to black craft instantly, like a, a little black craft. And when they come down lower, because I've had one come right down to tree level, and they can turn into a shadow. I mean, it's really scary when you see just a dark shadow over you like that. and It's big and, you know, it's just, you can see through it, but it's a shadow. And then it goes back up and becomes an orb again and flies off. I mean, in 2017, I just... I was out in the garden, sunbathing. I just thought I'd take pictures of the sky. And it was a lovely, clear blue. And um, there was just one plane and it had one, like, contrail going out of it. So I just thought I'd take pictures of that. And I just left the pictures there. I took a few all throughout the day and just left the pictures there and looked at them maybe six months later. And something made me zoom in on the picture, the first picture. And there were six orbs in a semicircle like this, around like that. Really clear, you can zoom in on them, lovely colours, turquoise, pink, blue, all these kind of colours. And then um, I took a few more pictures and they'd moved around the sky and then they're over there, then they're over there. And they're, but they're still, I, I measure the distance <laughs> between each orb and it's exactly the same in each one. So that one to that one, that one to that one. It was so many centimetres or whatever. And then they'd move to the other side of the contrail. Within a click, I'm going click, click, click. Within a click, they're over the other side of the sky, but still in the same semicircle. I measured them, still the same, exact same distance apart. Yeah. A silver craft with them. Um, a lovely little gold craft with them. And then I caught the gold craft. There's one with the gold craft with the you know, one of the orbs. So I know they're together. And then I have one with the little gold craft with six black um, little tiny ships, like a shell, a little shell shape like that, with yeah. six of those. I mean, they're up in the sky, you can zoom in, but you know, you can tell that there's a little gold craft is there with these six. I, I thought they were birds, I would have put them down to birds, but when I saw the little gold craft with it, it's very clear next to it. So I have a very clear. That's come back a few times. I have about six probably different days with that one, six pictures of that. So I know that little craft. It's gold and it has a black ring going around. And it's lovely, like a little, like a little round, overly shaped, like, you know, Nemo or someone like that. 
<laughs> the little fish, little roundy one, you know, little yeah. round, lovely one, but the black in the middle, black thing, I don't know if that is in the middle, could be a window or something, a big window all the way around. Yeah. But then um, definitely, definitely crafts they were. And that was all on the same day. So that means that I think I got six different types of crafts just on that one day. Wow. Different types they showed me. With yeah. there's another one, a red, a red one. Red is quite popular with them. I quite, catch quite a few red craft, like red. They're like like a jingy, you know, like a rubber jingy, that kind of shape, yeah. and, but red and flat on the top. And they might have something, maybe a thing like that, one flap at the back or something like that. And I've seen other ones like where they're like, uh, you know, the Hindenburg balloon, is that what it's called, the one that blew up, the helium yeah. thing. Like that kind of shape, but very, but much smaller, like a little helium balloon kind of shape, but they can fly all over the place and they can turn into the orbs as well just become an orb yeah so interesting it's amazing so yeah i used to think they were different but now they're the same they can all disappear sometimes and um, there's things in front of me i've got videos where i'm filming the orb and it just disintegrates like i saw the main orb at the beginning turning into dust like mist they just go like that and I, i've got that on video so they don't fly off they don't whatever Sometimes I've seen them glide off and they'll just go up, or go up to the clouds and they're gone, you can't follow them. But I've never seen them zoom off really fast. Or shoo. But I have got some ships shoo, flying past the screen when I left my camera on the tripod, really fast ones. I put yeah. one up today, actually, with a few black ones. So fast. Our pilots wouldn't handle it, first yeah. of all. You know, they're just so, oh, blink and you miss it. It's not even blink don't blink and you miss it <laughs> yeah it's so interesting I still yeah. think if you want to see a ufo just just look up all the, as much as you can look up because exactly yeah we'll see something there's loads going on up there the amount of crafts that i get just over my little bit of space here and they can't be i can't believe they're just all attracted to me all the time they must be everywhere up there i mean i've caught fleets up really high as well just white ones flying all over the place tiny little white dots all flying really? all over the place yeah really fast wow. and they're up so high as well going in and out the crowd stopping mid-flight turning back going that way that yeah. birds or insects the way they're flying they're just insects they wouldn't be it's too high up yeah and birds they don't fly like that they're definitely some sort of craft i thought have you heard of people saying that maybe some of the craft might be alive? Have you heard that? People yeah, say that? I have, yeah. Have you heard of Nick Hayes? No. I do on the show. Yeah, same sounds. Oh, no, I haven't watched any of your shows, to be honest. I must he, catch you. He, um, he, he believes that these are like, uh, possibly like a jellyfish. Yeah. In the sky. Yeah. So they, these things are like a living entity in the sky, possibly. Some of them look like that, you know. I mean, some of the craft are, even the small round little sphere shapes, sometimes when they're flying fast, you can see them going sh like a ghost, like at the back, like that, like a, the shape just goes into a shape like a ghost, like little Casper ghosts, you know, like yeah. that. So it's like, yeah. is it because they're moving at a different time? or something that we see them like that and it's not really happening it's just the way we're visualizing it yeah because how can a solid object morph and go like that yeah. I've, heard, I've heard people then, say as well that this, the, the, the space could be like the ocean as well but it's a possibility yeah uh, i don't know there's so yeah. many possibilities this was amazing <laughs> it's all it's funny how it's all coming to I know this now, isn't it? This last few years, it's all like how secretive the UFOs were before. Now everyone is catching them and they're yeah. everywhere. So I think they want to show themselves now. So yeah. I, I can see disclosure coming very soon. They're not going to be able to hide it much longer. I, hope so. I think they're I think they're getting impatient, thinking you've got to tell people that we exist. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Maybe Possibly. I hope so as well. Yeah. Because um, I've never seen so many before, and other people are saying the same. I've never captured so many hundreds yeah. of videos over just in the last since 2017, when it's I've had them very sparse over the years. Interesting. You know, with, with your experience when you was on the craft and you saw the people watching that film, it's yeah. sort of like is that preparing something that's going to happen in the future, possibly that you know with the yeah. plants and stuff? Are they going to come and change? 
start again or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's I, interesting. I think so. That's a possibility. No, I think so. Um, because I think we've restarted loads of times. Like we've reached a high level technology wise and everything else and sophistication and everything else. And we've started again. I mean, yeah. what happened to Egypt? I, I know there's a lot of UFO stories, Egypt. They were normal people. They were normal people like us. And maybe they did get, people say they got influenced. Did we get influenced to build Buckingham Palace? Did we get influenced to build all this stuff? No, we didn't. You know, yeah. we're, this is human nature. We are good at things like this. We build, and we've yeah. proved, we've built ourselves up again. If you even take from the 1900s and see what we've become and the architecture we've made and think, look at Dubai and places like that, what we've achieved. So yeah. it's no stretch of the imagination. Humans haven't changed in millions of years. We're almost the same as we were, you know, when we evolved, if we did evolve, but we haven't changed in a long, long time. So I think um, we have reached a lot of high civilization and we've been struck down again for whatever reason yeah. and it could be something to do with ETs and maybe they take people off and put them on other planets to start off again reseed them or whatever um but what about us yeah. <laughs> you know <That's> <laughs> am i going <laughs> take me <laughs> I, I better be going after all this <laughs> Well, it makes you wonder what would I be able to do? Because I can't have children, I'm too old now. So what would I be useful for? You know, <laughs> why would they take people that are not childbearing age? They must be taking young people if that, they're going to do that. I don't know. It definitely seems like they've been with you, following you, and working with you possibly throughout your life. Uh, it's, it's... Oh, definitely it has been. I can't doubt that now anymore. It's just, um, this is too much. I'd be stupid if I turned a blind eye. I used to turn a blind eye to loads of things. I think, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah. And then I'd get something else. And, oh my God, it's true. You know, <laughs> it is happening. It is happening. And I'd always try and convince myself otherwise. And um, well, at the back of my mind, I knew it was always true from a very early age. Yeah. And I've always been saying it. I never hid it from the family. I'd say it. And I, I used to say aliens created us when I was a child and wouldn't go to church and refuse to be a Catholic. And I'm not doing that. The priests know what he's talking about and all this kind of stuff, you know, called the Antichrist and all that. <laughs> Coming from a Catholic family and I'd say, you know, priest doesn't know what he's talking about. God doesn't exist and this, that and the other. And it's not true. It's nobody could, I had really questions that I want answered. I was a very inquisitive child and if something didn't make sense to me. It just didn't make sense. I'd be like, well, how does Santi fly? What does he use to fly? How is he? He's not magic. How is he doing this? And how is he doing that? But it's not possible. So I'd keep asking, asking, asking. People would get fed up with me. And I'd be asking these questions about God like this, you know, what about this? And how does he do this? And what about this? Why doesn't he help that person, this sick person? And so I was always full of this and just thinking, no, he doesn't exist. That's why. <laughs> Can I can I ask you? I know this is a difficult question, but but what do you think? What do you think they've been doing with you all your life? Like if you had to say what you think it is that's been happening, I know I that. Can... Know. Yeah, I know it's a very difficult question, and I can't answer. And um, I've no memories of ever being examined or tested or any tests being done on me. The memories that little flash I do get, it's being shown things. Or being told things and i'm thinking how do i know this thing and sometimes i know things that are going to happen in the future i'm thinking how do i know that how do i know this and it's not like voices telling you it's like i already knew it's like memories like i remember it and i'm thinking did all this happen before and we're living in the past or something yeah. it's just weird that time and you know, just a lot of strange things coincidences and the way things happen and too many coincidences. It's just yeah. weird. Yeah. Weird. Very weird. When you got memory back of that first time you got taken, how yeah. did you think that was just like a snap and the memory was there? It was just one no, it was just one image for it. I was washing up the dishes at the sink, I remember, and I just got one image, like a photograph actually, and just of me looking up like that. So, and then after about 15, that's, that's really weird to come into my head like that. You know, what I've just come into my head for. And then about 15 minutes later, another one, and then another one. And it was me 
going into up into a ship and then I saw the control room and I'm thinking and every time an image came I'm thinking oh my god it's a ship it's the craft I'm remembering something and they came back in images like that and when the image when I saw the image it brought back the memory as well so when I saw myself and saw the control room it brought back all the it just jolted me to memor memory to memorize it or yeah. to remember it sorry rather not to memorize it to remember it and that's what the images were doing, every image. So I got about 20 images and then it was all this. And then my own memories as well, just brought them all back. And with the images, I, and they, they were really like photographs, just like a snapshot. It was weird because that's never happened to me before, never. Yeah. People used to say they get flashbacks and this. And I used to think, I wish I got a flashback or something. I never see anything. I wanted my missing memories back, you know, I want something. Yeah, and that was the first time that ever happened. Wow. So they're very, very slow and drip feeding information. I just yeah. don't know what they're doing. I really, that's my number one question. I just wish I knew what the hell are they doing with me when they come around at night. Every time I'm in the garden, especially in the summer, I'm out there all the time. I'd make a fire and I'm out there and listen to podcasts and whatever. And um, one will just come by itself. It'll just a white light come around really, they come they move lovely and all that and you can tell it's nothing we have the way they move and all it's just so slick it's slick they're so slick they really are yeah. and it'll just sit there and watch me for i feel it watching me and i'll take pictures and things our video whatever and then it'll just slide they disappear so am i getting abducted i don't think so because i'm still listening to the podcast yeah still there smoking my cigarette or whatever my coffee so it's not like I don't know. I really don't know why they're coming over, and it's oh, it's such a lot. You it's feel a connection. Like a, you feel a connection when you see it. Oh, definitely, definitely. But I never, I've never really talked to them yet. Like yeah. asked them while they're there. Like, well, I have. I've said, um, "Flash me" or something like that, and they'll flash me. I've done that. So yeah, but never have said, um, "Can you answer me some questions?" or can you talk to me in my ear? I think that'd be freaky. Then I might think I'm schizophrenic or something. <laughs> Can you do that next time? Because I want to know. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't know what to ask them or what they want. Or I'd invite them down if I had space for them to land and say, look, come in and have a cup of tea or something. Yeah. I want to talk to you. But um, I'm moving to Spain. Hopefully when I sell the house here, I'm moving to Spain. And I'm going to buy a little bit of land, a couple of acres, something like that. And hopefully have a bit of space for them to land. Yeah. And uh, I'll be able to get a good shot. So I want a good view and, you know, a roof terrace and all that. So I can take, have the whole view and a bit of space for if they do want to come down. Yeah. I just want to get away from London and people and all this. I thought I just want to live near a little village, a little walking yeah, distance nice. into the seaside town, have a bit of land, grow my own stuff, grow yeah. everything. Yeah. And then just that my family be over every weekend, probably partying. Yeah. So I'll have all them keep awesome. company and yeah, so that's my plan, so I'm gonna do. That's awesome. <laughs> Marie, it's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for coming very on. Very good. Oh, you're yeah. welcome, you're very welcome. It's been great. You've asked some great questions and it's been oh, really, really, really enjoyable. Thank you very much. Can okay. you tell the audience where, where they can find you? I'm just on Twitter. I use Twitter and my YouTube, just Marie's UFOs, you'll find me. I've got a load to upload on my uh, YouTube channel. I've just found about 30 videos that I've never shown before from oh, Sri wow. Lanka. And I've got loads of them, big spheres and things, so I'll put them up. I've just joined forces with a couple of people who contacted me, actually, in the States. And they're filming some amazing stuff, orbs as well, and the same stuff that I'm filming. So the three of us are talking every night, and they're filming some amazing stuff. Unbelievable, every night. Awesome. And uh, both of them. Yeah, wow. so uh, they were, I'll give you the links for their channels worth looking into. Yeah, They're cool. posting videos every day as well. The orbs, like just ships flying across. They're obviously a craft, um, a, a light, we say. I don't know whether to keep calling them orbs. People are getting mixed up because you've got orbs in your house like spirits. They're calling these orbs. But I honestly don't know what else to call them. Lights in the sky or yeah, craft. If you call them craft, people say them. You know, As we said before, is there a connection between the two things, the spirits that we're seeing in our house? Yeah. Yeah. I just wish I could uh, 
make a difference between the craft orbs and the other orbs, you know, just say, because um, just orbs is too, too open for everything. And yeah. they are definitely craft. They're moving like craft. They're moving as fast as craft. They're as big as craft. But all we see is a light sometimes. And, um, well, there is something behind that light. You know, there is. I think they put that light on, especially. I think yeah. they really do. Because yeah. when they turn, I mean, I have one with two little lights. I think I told you it's black at two lights. And when it turns that way, you could see definitely the black circle and the two lights at the side. But when it turns that way, it's just like an orb, like mm. when you look at it that way. So they're very deceptive. Even the triangle ones, if you think you see a triangle, when that turns the other way, it's a completely different shape. Yeah. Like even the ones I've seen, the black and silver ones, you think they're like just a little black circle. And when it turns the other way, it's like, oblong shape or it could be a cigar shape but they're more like a rectangle rectangular shape it's not a cigar because we're if you think about the side of a plane we only get the side like that don't we with the windows yeah and a wing or something so if we get the side of a ufo like that and it's like a cigar shape when that turns that way or that way they're massive big structures like square or rectangle they're not cigar shaped really a lot of them people they are and i've, I've Film quite a few big ones outside there uh, and um, in the sky like big black ones like you have to really zoom in like it's a little black and I think, what's, what's that it looks just odd in the picture and yeah. zoom in and it's a black craft like quite big but it's a quite high but yeah. it's still a big like as big as a plane planes are even smaller than that yeah like they're up that high, you know and so these are there's just so many of them up there there really is so many I'd suggest anybody putting their camera on a tripod and aiming at the sky just for half an hour and just say, you know, let's film something, come into my view, let me film you. And they do. They're listening to people. I've told loads of people to do this and, you know, just ask them to appear. And sometimes they do appear for people. So it's like they're, they're hearing people. Yeah. And it's a bit strange, isn't it? It's awesome. Yeah. If, any, is, so. if anything else happens and you catch anything, I have any other missing time, please let me know. I'd love to. Yeah, I will do. I'll send you all a few bits of interesting stuff so you can see what I've been talking about and you can see. Oh, all right, uh, Tommy. Is it Tommy? Much. It's Tommy. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Wow, awesome conversation. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you did enjoy the show, please share it. Share it where you can. Share it on your social media. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell that person at work that you hate. Tell everybody about Let's Get Freaky Podcast. You might not hate anyone at work. I'm sorry. I don't know what that was. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back very, very soon for more freaky conversations. In the meantime, stay safe. And remember... Keep it freaky. Bye for now. Love ya.